All of the problems I work through in my videos can be downloaded from accountingworkbook.com. If you'd like a copy for yourself, just click the PDF link and you can download a copy to your computer. Also found on the website are links to all of my accounting videos, not just the ones here on YouTube that are publicly listed. They're also members only videos. About 40% of my videos are free and open. The other 60% are for members. If you click one of the members links, it'll take you to a page that looks like this, says members only content. If you'd like access to that content, just hit the join button. Okay, let's jump into the problem. Let's examine problem 6-2A. This has us doing the high-low method, scatter graph method, and least squares regression method. I'm going to split this into three videos because I do want to spend a bit of time on each. Remember the goal here, right? We have cost data. It doesn't always beautifully fit the shape of a line. We might have curved costs or just it doesn't always behave exactly like a line would. And we're saying, what if it was a line? If we could use a line to reasonably estimate this cost, we can do some powerful things that we're going to learn about in the next chapter. It's called uh, break-even analysis or CVP, cost volume profit analysis. This chapter is about massaging our data to get it ready to do break-even analysis or CVP analysis. So we'll start with the high-low method. So here we have this example. Danny Office Supplies shows the following data related to shipping costs for the first six months of the year. And there's January through June. There's the number of packages and the shipping cost. Uh, the question asks, using the high-low method, estimate the cost formula for this scenario. Now, remember, we're, we're worried about lines here, and the cost formula is y equals mx plus b. The activity here is the packages shipped. That's going to be our x. And our shipping cost is our y. Costs are always on the y-axis. Okay, so high-low method says, take the highest month, and take the lowest month and make a line out of those two pieces of data, the high and the low, and just draw a line to connect them and that will give you your high-low method. So we find the month with the high activity level, not the high cost necessarily, the high activity level. So the high activity level month is April. We find the month with the low activity level and the lowest activity month was June. And we take that data. So we say, okay, the month with the highest activity level, April, the cost in that month was 1500 So we take the high cost, and it's really the high month cost, the cost in the month that was highest, minus low cost. And again, it's not the lowest cost on my chart. It's just the cost from the month that had the lowest activity level. So high cost minus low cost divided by high activity activity minus low. Act, I'll write it out this time. Activity. Okay, so again, high cost. I really want to be careful there. When I say high cost, I mean the month with the highest activity level, the cost in that month. So in this case, April happened to be 1500 and that was the highest cost month. But if it was January, we would still use April because the number of shop, uh, packages shipped was higher. So we, we choose the month with the highest activity level. Okay, I've, I think I've belabored that point long enough. Uh, shipping cost in April was 15000 Our lowest activity level, the cost in that month, was 1100 I think I said 15000 1500 um, For June, uh, for, for activity, we're going to take 130 minus 90. So I get 400 over 40. Okay, this is going to be some pretty easy math even I can do. It's 10, and I got to remember our numerator, of course, was in dollars, and our denominator was in packages shipped. So it's $10 per package and shipped, right? Per package shipped. Okay, so thinking about our cost formula, our formula for a line, it's y equals mx plus b. Let's remember something. Y is our total cost. M is our cost per unit. X is the number of units. The activity level, I should say. I, I, number of units is often the activity level, so it's like in this case the number of packages, but I'll, I'll use the word activity level. And B is our fixed 
cost. So what have we computed here? We've computed $10 per package. This is my cost per unit. This is, if we're using the traditional line metrics, this is the slope. We've just done a rise over run calculation, if that's ringing any bells for you back in the old math days. So we've computed our slope as 10. So we know y equals 10x plus b. Okay, so I want to figure out my b, and how I do it is I plug in the number numbers for x and y into my formula. Now I can use either April or June, I'll get the same answer, but I'll, I'll just use April for fun, <laughs> randomly here. So my x was 130 and my uh, b, or my y rather was 1500. So 1500 equals 10 times 130 plus b. 1500 equals 1300 plus b, and can sort of take 1300 away from both sides. b equals 200. So my formula for the line, my answer for part one here, part A, y equals mx plus b, y equals 10x plus 200. That's the answer to part A. Part A I says, using your answer for part A above, assume to lie the company expects to ship 150 packages. What's the estimated shipping cost? Okay. So y equals 10x plus 200. What is 150 packages here? Well, that's our expected x. That's our activity level. We're expecting 150 packages. So let's plug that in for x. y equals 10 times 150 plus 200. Let's do the math. y equals 1,500 plus 200. y equals $1,700. So our expected cost for shipping in the next month. If we're planning to ship 150 packages, we should budget for $1,700 to be the cost to ship those packages. Okay, that's it for the high-low method. In the next video, we will explore the scatter graph method. Stay tuned.